In today's other news, rescuers in Indonesia pulled another survivor from ruins left by Sunday's powerful earthquake. The death toll rose to at least 105 as crews combed through debris on Lombok Island. Thousands of villagers are growing desperate for aid. Our tent accommodates six families. It's very hot during the day and we are drenched with sweat. But the night is chilling. We need blankets and the children also need some cold and cough medicine and milk. We also have two seniors here who have difficulty moving around and need help. The aid organization Oxfam estimates more than 20,000 people are in need of shelter. Thousands more are camping in the open air. President Trump has fired off a new warning about Iran, targeted at countries that might violate newly reinstated U.S. sanctions. In a tweet today, he wrote, anyone doing business with Iran will not be doing business with the United States. The warning came as German automaker Daimler AG announced it would halt all business in Iran. In Japan, a prestigious medical school admitted today that it altered admission scores for years in order to limit the number of female students. An internal investigation found that officials at Tokyo Medical University believed many women would later abandon medicine to become mothers. The school's head apologized. Society is changing rapidly, and we need to respond to that. Any organization that fails to utilize women will grow weak and will fail to contribute to society. The education minister says admissions procedures at all medical schools will now be reviewed. Back in this country, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is out with a clear picture of dangers posed by the Zika virus. It shows that one in seven babies born to mothers who were infected during pregnancy developed health problems, ranging from birth defects to seizures. The researchers analyzed children born to infected women in Puerto Rico and other U.S. territories. The virus is spread by mosquitoes. Police in New Mexico say they found the body of a young boy at a compound near the Colorado border. That comes one day after they discovered 11 children living in hunger and filth. Aerial video showed a trailer buried in the ground, surrounded by walls of old tires and wooden pallets. Five adults have been charged with child abuse. The children range in age from 1 to 15. New York will become the first major American city to let jail inmates make phone calls for free. Currently, the calls run 50 cents for the first minute and another nickel for each additional minute. New York's decision comes as prison rights groups are pushing to limit private companies from making money off prisoners. The new law takes effect in nine months. There's word that electric car maker Tesla may go private. CEO Elon Musk tweeted today that he might buy back stock at $420 a share. He said it would help Tesla focus on the long term rather than quarterly profits. In the broader market, the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 126 points to close near 25,629. The Nasdaq rose 24 points, and the S&P 500 added eight. And former Nevada governor and senator and Ronald Reagan confidant Paul Laxalt died Monday. He became friends with the California governor in the 1960s. Later, he chaired the Reagan presidential campaigns and served as a liaison between the Reagan White House and Congress. Paul Laxalt was 96 years old. Still to come on the NewsHour, the business partner of President Trump's former campaign chairman cross-examined in court. Fears of a crackdown in Venezuela after an apparent assassination attempt using drones. Mass shootings that sparked a debate over temporarily restricting some people's access to guns and much more.